All right, now we've made it to our final video of this unit. This is going to be talking about properties of metal in general and characteristics of metallic bonds. Now, the other thing that we want to be able to do is we're going to talk a little bit about alloys. Many times we talk about alloys um, and what they're used for in terms of uh, rims on cars or um, different decorative things, jewelry. Um, but we want to see how they're actually made and why they're actually important overall. Now, metallic bonds are, we're going to talk about um, how they're arranged. And for metallic bonds, we're actually going to see that we're not dealing with neutral metal atoms that are sitting there. So I wouldn't have like a chunk of sodium that's sitting there next to each other um, with all the atoms close together. And this is what causes what we call a metallic bond. <coughs> These metals are actually going to consist of um, very closely packed cations with loose electrons. We're going to talk about the fact that these valence electrons, we're going to call them delocalized. Immediately when I see that, I see that word local in there. Local meaning usually close by. Now, when something is delocalized, it means it has the ability to move and to go about in different uh, directions and locations. Now, because these uh, valence electrons are not held in one place is going to cause us to see something that looks like this which is what we call more of a sea of electrons so we have these metal atoms the nuclei that are right there in the middle and then they're completely surrounded by electrons Sorry. now this is actually going to, if I go back this is actually going to give us um, some of the different properties that we always talk about looking at things like um, magnetism, why some metals respond to magnets and others don't, um, just because of how those electrons are scattered about. Also, why um, when you beat on um, metals, we talk about the fact that they're malleable and that they're ductile. This explains actually some of those uh, properties. Why? Because as I take a sheet of metal or a piece of metal, there's actually space, if you notice, between each of the nuclei. They're not all jam-packed together. There's some space for them to move. So as I take my hammer and I beat on it, I beat on it, I beat on it, it's actually going to bend and begin to get closer and closer and closer and closer. This allows it to become thinner and to be useful in many different ways. Now, why are alloy, alloys so important? Sorry. Alloys are going to be a mixture of two or more metals or elements. An example, we have brass, which is an alloy of copper and zinc, um, or steel. Most steel is mostly iron, but then there's a mixture of nickel and copper and all, not copper, uh, carbon, um, these different things that'll make it grow stronger and better. Now, why are they important? Because the properties are often superior to those of the component elements. If I were to take a piece of iron um, and sit it out, outside, and it rained for a few days, and then it stopped and dried up, um, different things like that. As it dries and the, the iron rea reacts with the oxygen in the air and with the moisture, it's actually going to begin to rust. It's actually going to break down and become weaker and weaker over time. But if I join that iron with nickel and with carbon and with some copper and some other uh, minor um, metals that are also going to be put in there, it's going to take on the properties of those metals as well. And so it may be more rust resistant. Now, didn't say that it won't always rust because there are some situations where it still will rust over time. But it will take a longer period of time to have that, to have that change, that chemical change, take place. And this is the reason why we actually look at a lot of alloys. Why are they important and why we want to use them? Because if I have uh, this original concept or original substance, I can actually improve upon it and make it better so that I can use it for a wide array or um, many different um, purposes that maybe no one else has used it before. In the situation what we're dealing with here, another example is sterling silver. Sometimes you see people with sterling silver rings or necklaces or different things like that. But sterling silver is actually 92.5 percent silver. Now, still overwhelming majority of it is silver, but it also has 
copper in there. Why? The copper makes it a little bit more durable, a little bit harder. And so with the banging and clanging around of, uh, of jewelry or uh, the forks and, uh, and tableware, as many times you'll see with older uh, families that have the um, special silverware for special events, it's a little bit more durable and it will last a lot longer than if it were pure silver. Now, we're going to do some activities in class with this where you guys can get a chance to see how we're actually going to use this a little bit better. Um, but that is actually it for this unit. Now you have all the material necessary to be prepared for your test. We're going to take our time and make sure that we can get you there as quickly as possible and as best as possible, shall I say. Have a good evening, and I can't wait to see you in class.